Hey, it's Corey Knight with Classroom Tech Made Simple, and I'm pretty excited to share with you Poplet. Now, Poplet has a free version and a paid version, and like most free versions, it's a little bit more limited than the paid version, but you're going to be able to do just about the same things with the free version as with the paid version. The only difference is, is that with the paid version, you could have students collaborate together on a Poplet. So let's go ahead and download this. I'm excited to share this app with you because it's been a little over a year since I've used it in the classroom. And actually, I feel as if it's probably one of the better mind mapping apps available. So let's go ahead and get started on this. I think you're going to find that it's going to be one of the most powerful and easy to use. So when you first open up the app, it's going to give you the welcome screen. And the, the easiest thing to do here is just to actually exit out of this. And we're going to actually tap this and delete this. So each of the bubbles, they call popples. So it's the same thing as just one leg of the concept map or mind map or whatever you want to call it. They just give it a different name. So if you look at the box right here that has the different colors, what that will do is it will change the color of the background and kind of the theme of the entire poplet. So students are going to really like playing with the colors more than I do. I look more for the content, but students, part of the experience is to change the color and make it personable. So after you choose a color, you simply just double tap. You can insert text, you can insert a drawing, and you can insert a photo. You can change the color of the popple, which is part of the experience. Say that you're making a mind map on geometric shapes. Now I'm not a math teacher by training, so you're going to have to bear with me on this, but I'm going to do my best. So say this is a list of geometric shapes going to be the title of it. Now if I want to change the size of this, I can just grab one of the corners and I can move this around. If I click off of it, I then can zoom out and I'm actually going to drag this to the top since it's my title. Now if I click back on the popple and I click any one of the circles on the outside of the popple, it will add one of the popples to it. And I can drag this anywhere that I want. So maybe this title is Triangles, and then this one is, I can make another one, it's Quadrilaterals. So what I can do from here, I can create another popple, and say that I want to teach my students on equilateral triangles. So I'm going to hit the text feature, and I'm going to type in Equilateral Triangles. Now I saved a few pictures from Safari on my camera roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit the picture frame button. And I have the option of open in library, take a photo, or paste an image. So I saved it in my camera roll, so I'm going to open in library. It's going to ask to access your photos. You have to click OK. And then I'm going to go to my camera roll. I can either rotate right or left. And when I'm satisfied, I click the Done button and then it's going to put the equilateral triangle in that popple. If I want to go back here and edit this, I'd have to hit the text button again. That's something that people always get confused. On the right side, I can make the text larger, medium size, or small. There really is no size difference. That's one of the limitations. I can orient the text on different sides of the popple. If I want to define it, I can. Now, I don't know if that's the actual definition of an equilateral triangle, so you're just going to have to take my word for it right now. If I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Now, if I want to add a popple or if I want my students to draw within there where they would draw an equilateral triangle, they can. So that's a good option there as well. If I click outside of it, I then can move that popple around and make it smaller. Say maybe I want to add a real life example of where equilateral triangles are used. I then can create another bubble and I'm going to add another photo. I then can size this down. If you reverse pinch you can move everything around. You can zoom out. 
So maybe over here, I'm gonna discuss what squares are, and I'm gonna add a photo of a square. And I can do the same thing over here. So right now what I have is a really quick, easy, simple concept map of geometric shapes. They can be way more complex than this, but this is one of the easiest and quickest ways to make a mind map. Now there's all kinds of options. I can click the view all and it's actually going to zoom it in so that you can see all of them at the same time. If you click the gear, you can then multi-select popples. You'll tap each of them with two fingers. And the purpose of this is so that you can move all of them at once. And that can be a good tip and tool to use when you're moving. If you create multiple poplets, you then can move these around in different areas. So that's the basic features and function of poplet. Now, if you want your students to be able to share these or turn them into you as an assignment, if you're using a service like Shobi or if you're using like Canvas or Google Classroom, whatever you're using, having kids turn in digital documents, you would use the export button, which is located right here. You can either save the JPEG, which is like a picture file, you could email a JPEG, or you could email a PDF. And it creates the PDF for you. And this is very similar to what Inkflow does, and I advise you to use this. If your students have a Gmail account, they can then send it to you that way. One of the limits of Poplet is that you're only allowed to make one of them at a time. If you had the paid version, you could then make multiple poplets. But what I would do is I would have my students create a poplet, either screenshot it by hitting the home screen and the power button at the same time, or saving it as a JPEG, and then creating a completely new one, just editing the same one that they previously created. So that's poplet. Like I said, there's some limitations, but for the most part, it's a very powerful tool. It's simple to use. Your students are going to be able to pick it up very quickly, like with any of these mind mapping apps. Our final app that we're going to look at for mind mapping apps is iBrainstorm.